I never thought I would feel so sad and sore Seems like no one's watching TV anymore Here at Auntie, Wednesday nights have gone downhill And I blame it on that quitter Adam Hills The Wednesday lineups in the sewers Blame downloaders and I viewers Or admit that certain programs ain't too hot McCallop wisely went to Friday Making Wednesday Stephen Friday Now the chaser's turn to have a Wednesday flop They called in Denton as their savior Who thought giving people blazers Would bring that rating spiral to a stop But Randling failed to pass the test Because it had this lousy guest So it's our turn now to have a ratings flop But we should look for silver linings now and then and just be thankful that we're not on Channel 10 Where even dancers and fake boobs cannot survive Hell, what's happened? Have you people gotten lives? Well, let's look at shows that rate them See if we can emulate them We need to find a way to get on top All of this year's big hit shows Have either spinning chairs or modes That's the way we might avoid a ratings flop yeah, if we do the show like this, we'll have a hit and not a miss. That's the only way to dodge a ratings flop. Yeah, it's the only way to dodge a ratings flop. about what's making news and how the news is made and the media landscape has totally changed since we were last oh, on it's, it's a whole new world. Mm. Massive job cuts at Fairfax and News Limited. Channel 9's on the brink of bankruptcy, falling profits. But amid all the media doom, the one positive is that people are watching movies again. Well, they're watching one movie. Ah, uh, yes, The Innocence of Muslims. <laughs> I don't think since Phantom Menace there's been people so angry about a movie. Uh, I've got to say that it is doing absolutely great. In fact, in terms of box office for films made by religious nutters, it's actually just taken over top spot from The Passion of the Christ. That's good. That's uh, very good. <laughs> and in Pakistan this week, the Minister for Trains even offered up a bounty to anyone to kill the filmmaker. Now, I don't know why he bothered with the bounty, though. If he wants the guy dead, he should just invite him for a ride on a Pakistani train. Absolutely. Uh, that, now, that, elsewhere that, in the news, uh, Prime Minister Gillard has been living it up in New York this week where she's lobbying to get Australia a seat on the UN Security Council. Yeah, but to get that Security Council seat, Australia faces big competition from the European heavyweights, Finland, oh, yep. Luxembourg, yep. and to make it worse, Gina Reinhart is demanding three seats on the Council and a controlling <laughs> no. share of the whole of the UN. <laughs> now, um, Gillard got the week off to a very strong start. During the course of the week, I've got uh, five themes that I intend to be working on. And she outlined those five themes for the week. One, get food poisoning. Two, intense vomiting. Three, diarrhoea. Four, cold sweats. And five, feverish delusions that anyone in the UN cares about Australia. Yeah, she's been on a sickbed for most of the week, struck down by a stomach bug. And mm. I've had a look at the x-rays, and it's a particularly nasty bug, this Ooh. one. It, it often strikes out of jealousy when someone else gets to strut the world stage. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to say, in terms of actually getting the Security Council seat, I am feeling pretty confident. I mean, we've got huge support around the world. Uh, we've been endorsed by the Pacific Island Forum, by the nations in our region in the Pacific. We've received the support of the uh, Caribbean island nations. That's significant. That's significant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's just map that out. Yeah. All the uh, flashing red countries are the ones that don't support our yeah. bit. <laughs> and all the flashing green countries are the ones that do. Oh. We've got this in That's the bag! And, uh, oh, yeah! Fill that seat! I'll tell you what, with the tropical islands on board, even if we don't have the numbers for a Security Council seat, we've definitely got the numbers for a seat at this pool bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, closer to home in politics, last week we saw the defeat of the gay marriage bill in, in both Houses of Parliament. A debate that was largely overshadowed by the comments of Senator Cory Bernardi. Yes, it was Bernardi who made the case that if gay marriage is legalised, that could lead to people marrying their animals mm. in what's become known as the St Bernardi argument. Mm. <laughs> the Senator said he... Uh, 
The Senator said he read about bestiality and such things in the works of Peter Singer and also in the best-selling work of popular fiction, Fifty Shades of Greyhounds. Oh, yeah, good one. Good read. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They can be hard to catch, but the rewards are there for you if you try. <laughs> but look, the, the Senator's fears about gay marriage, are they justified? It's a debate that continues to divide the country. So I thought it's time for someone to dive in and separate fact from hysteria. Julia Gillard's confused some people. How can an unmarried, atheist, left-wing, first female Prime Minister be opposed to gay marriage? So I've come to the National Marriage Day Rally to find out the arguments against gay marriage. Stand up for marriage. Stand up Maybe for they marriage. make more sense when they're not singing. One woman for life exclusively. Ah, here's an argument. Marriage should be as it is defined in the Bible. Do you think we should still have the traditional biblical position on marriage? Well, that's what I'm in favour of. So do you still think that women should be subject to their husbands? No, I never said that. You don't, but that's in the New Testament, so... Well, I didn't realise you were a theologian. And... Sorry about that. I didn't realise you hadn't read it when you said, I want to base my marriage on the Bible. Well, look, see, what about somebody who does read the Bible? They'd be able to explain traditional marriage. But if Thesis says that women should submit to the husband as if he was a lord... And, yes, I know what you're saying. It's, uh... Christ, yeah, we, we believe that marriage is based on, uh, uh, ultimately, we believe marriage comes from God, so, and it's between uh, uh, woman and man, and uh, that Christ uh, himself, uh, he... <laughs> Sorry, let's try to thought. We need to simplify this stuff. Look, you play rugby league, you play AFL. You can't create a game where it's rugby league on an oval. Uh, that's a different game. It's an argument that's got the rugby league community at loggerheads. Do you reckon in this modern day, the rugby league should be able to be played on an oval? <laughs> no. Right, I thought you'd be more open-minded. Yeah, it should be played on an oval, definitely. No oval, tidy shorts. Mmm, this is tough. I need a new argument. I know, gay marriage will promote the gay lifestyle. And MP Fred Nile is an expert on what promotes the gay lifestyle. He even thought that Penny Wong having a baby promoted lesbianism. Did you consider becoming a lesbian then? <laughs> I couldn't. Do you know of people that decided to become lesbians when they saw Penny Wong have no, a child? I don't think so. It's, it's just promoting the lifestyle rather yeah. than a, a particular person. I was quite tempted to become Asian when I saw it happen. <laughs> Still too complex? Hmm, maybe this pamphlet I got at the National Marriage Day will help simplify things. Men and women fit together like a bolt and a nut. Yes, you know, that yes, kind of thing, like, right. a, like a foot and a shoe. Mm. Do you agree with that kind that's of right, thing? Yes. Yeah, like a penis and an anus. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, not like that. What do you think about the... Currently, the Prime Minister opposes gay marriage. Yes. Now, from an atheist perspective... I, I, I congratulate him for his strong stand. That's the only reason hasn't gone through the Parliament. I think it's a her. Fred Nile made a really good point there. Not so much the bit about Julie Gillard being a man, but about the fact that she is an atheist. You said that bit. As an atheist, it doesn't matter about the religious arguments, it's all about the... ...cultural institution of long-standing in Australian society. The Prime Minister is right. It's a long-standing institution that shouldn't be changed. I wonder from what year it shouldn't be changed. Up to 1962, Aboriginals in WA couldn't marry without permission. Aboriginals marry? Huh. Till 1966, women were sacked from the public service when they got married. Married women working? Huh. Until 1976, women could be legally raped in marriage. Unrapeable wives? Huh. <laughs> We need more powerful arguments. These creepy people say it is OK to have consensual sexual relations between humans and animals. Will that be a future step? Next we'll be having, you know, three blokes, two dogs, you know, nothing is sacred after this. And I can prove that that slippery slope is true. Between the 70s and 90s in Australia, sex between homosexuals was made legal, leading inevitably to today where sex with dogs is legal too. Ah, uh, no. It's not legal. It's not legal? It's not legal. Run, please. Run, run. Don't tell anyone. I'm all out of ideas. Let's just try one more argument from somebody who voted against gay marriage in Parliament. The threat to marriages is not what gay people may do. It is lack of commitment. 
It is cruelty, it is indifference, it is adultery, it is all of those things. That does change my view of gay marriage. Will you marry me, Malcolm? <laughs> but you know what it will lead to? What? Uh, you, 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 if, if that happens, then you'll start, you know, looking favourably at small animals. <laughs> Tell us about this. Oh, no, Please, no. Malcolm. No, I want, to, I want to spare both you and the animal kingdom. This is Australia. No beheadings. I wasn't born to be a footballer. I wasn't born to win a major. And I wasn't born to wear the baggy green. In fact, I don't have any discernible talent whatsoever, which is why I turned to gambling and why I leech off problem gamblers every single day. Because as a Waterhouse, I was born to help people lose their money so their lives could become as unfulfilling as mine. Join me at TomWaterhouse.com because no one relates to losers quite like I do. Welcome back to the Inside the Wheel. And this week, we're looking at how the media covered the Muslim riots in Australia. Riots? Riots? Hey, this was no mere riots. Gosh, there were Muslims involved, so it was a... <laughs> Violent and unpredictable Muslim uprising. Uprisings, uprisings. I mean, this was an uprising. Ah, ah but, but not every media outlet took the uprising angle. Over at Green Left Weekly, it was actually the police rioting against some peaceful Muslims. <laughs> yes. I mean, it was unnerving to see this extremist policeman headbutting that poor Muslim's flag. <laughs> no, uh, still, you know, the rest of the world had a different view, as put forward by the police commissioner. You don't wear a face covering unless you're going to get up to badness. Badness? Was he just promoting underbelly now, is he? Yes, yes. Oh, no, Scipioni's on the Channel 9 payroll, Taz. I mean, he's becoming pretty blatant about it, too. He's even plugging their American sitcoms. Two and uh, half a minute is a must-watch program. So, I don't think that's appropriate. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. not. I mean, especially given there's so much excellent TV on other channels, okay. you know, like on Sky News, where Carson Scott isolated the real takeout message from the protests. That is the takeout from today's dramatic events here in the heart of Sydney. Events scheduled for tomorrow, namely the marathon, 35,000 runners. Well, that event is taking place. Yes, yes, that was the takeout message for Muslims worldwide. <laughs> I thought that analysis was spot on, but then Channel 10's New Zealand import, Paul Henry, found a totally different takeout message from the same protests. And I look at them, you know, wearing their blooming whatever those robes are called. They're all wearing Nikes. Where do you think they come from? You're running shoes. You know, shouldn't you be in bare feet? Oh, I see. So, if you hate one American, you're not supposed to wear American shoes. Mm, well, I mean, look, I hate one New Zealander, so I'd better not wear these shoes. <laughs> I don't know why you bought them in the first place, Andrew. Uh, it, it wasn't just Paul Henry. There were many experts on Islamic theology analysing this riot, and none were more qualified than Sunrise's sexologist. I don't think children that young should be at a riot. Yeah, you say, I mean, you only obtain nuggets of wisdom like that from sexologists. So, in fact, in fact, everybody is onto it. <laughs> But, you know, some programs couldn't afford a sexologist, so they resorted to using Muslim experts on religion, specifically Joe Hildebrand's religion. But it's very easy for, say, like Joe, no offence, Joe, to say that, because you have um, restrictions against your religion. You can't say anything bad about Jewish people. We don't have them kind of protections. I'm not oh, aren't you? Are you sure? <laughs> Good thing that Joe isn't Jewish, otherwise Jews really would control the media. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, the only thing networks like more than analysis is apologies. And not just one, no. For an apology to count, it needs to be made every single day for the rest of your life. Yeah, and the go-to guy for apologies would have to be that last guy you saw, Kaiser Trad. Now, he had absolutely nothing to do with the idiots behind this riot. Yet, all week, he was expected to take responsibility for their actions. 
I do take some responsibility. Some fault lies with, with us as the elders in the community. We should have preempted this. I mean, Kaiser's now expected to apologise for all kinds of bad behaviour he had nothing to do with. I apologise for the protests by Muslims. I also apologise for Julia Gillard's stomach bun. I apologise for the unseasonal humidity. I apologise for two and a half men winning an Emmy and for the disappointing new banana paddle pot. It is just one isolated flavour. It is not representative of all paddle pops. We go all the time. And it's not just apologies. Muslims are also very useful for providing a second-hand mouthpiece for your own dodgy view. Yes, you can be as inflammatory as you want, as long as you attribute that statement to an ethnic. I was talking to the taxi driver who's from the Middle East. He said they should be sent back. They are not true Australians. And I said, a lot of them are born here. And he said, I don't care. From their original roots, they should be sent back. And that was a Middle Eastern person saying it. See? That makes perfect sense. And you know why? Muslims know stuff. With the right prompting, they even know statistics they couldn't possibly know. If we were allowed to look at the 15 pictures on the front page of the Daily Telegraph today, yep. what percentage would be on Centrelink payments, do you think? Man, at least 70% of them. Maybe 12 out of the 15? Probably, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, that was conclusive. I mean, well, let's get our own Muslim statistician. So how many of Ray Hadley's statistics would you say he simply pulls out of his ass? Oh, it's hundred percent. Damn it, indeed. So the media spoke to a whole bunch of people who have nothing to do with the riot. What about the people who actually caused it? Oh, no-one knows who caused the riot, Joe, Oh, yes, it? they do. Welfare authorities have been ordered to find this boy and investigate his mother after his message of religious hatred helped escalate Saturday's riot. You see, that child mastermind escalated the riot. Yes, I recognise that toddler. He's responsible for fermenting violence everywhere. He whipped up the orc armies of the Dark Lord Sauron. That wasn't the only shire he was inciting violence in. I mean, look at him here with Vanessa. That <laughs> says it all. When faced with such insurmountable evil, there is only one thing you can do. Take their children calls to remove jihad kids from their parents. Yes, because taking dark-skinned children away from their parents has always worked so well in this country. <laughs> but despite all this argy-bargy, there was one thing that everyone could agree upon. The ugly scenes we saw were completely un-Australian. It's un-Australian. This is very un-Australian. Mm, so even the imams are labelling things un-Australian. Of yeah. course it's un-Australian. We live in Libya, Andrew. Oh, Chaz, <laughs> oh, look, we've been through this before. D don't you pay attention to the news at all? This is not Libya. This is not Libya. This isn't Libya. Oh, sorry, it slipped my mind. Yes, sorry, this yeah. is not Libya, and neither is this, uh, nor this, nor this. In fact, we have so many riots here over in Libya, this is how the police chief tries to calm their protests down. <laughs> Look, that's all very well, Andrew, but the Muslim protests were extreme. There were hundreds of people drawn there by social media. They threw bottles and rocks, and special police were called in to disperse them. That does not happen in Australia except for the very same weekend in Perth. Police in Perth are pelted with bricks, rocks and glass bottles. Around 500 people turned up in Piara waters after word spread on Facebook. Officers called in reinforcements, including mounted police, the dog squad and the police helicopter to disperse the crowd. Mm, sounds like it has all the hallmarks of an uprising. Oh, no, 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 no. These weren't Muslims. No, so this was an out-of-control party in the city's southeast. It was an out-of-control party! <laughs> of course, Which of is why it was reported once and then immediately forgotten. Hey, but, but, but don't you see? This is the path to peace. Muslims riot like we do, they call things un-Australian like we do, and they tell Muslims to go home like we do! <laughs> Complete racial harmony is here! <laughs> It's cookie gate. <laughs> Nude gate. Banana gate. Slipper gate. What's become known as bum gate. Pie gate. Banana mm. gate. Etch a sketch gate. Perumbin's very own tree gate. It's the gates of the heart of gate gate. He's the swimmer who stole our hearts at the London Olympic Games. Dubbed Cedric the Salamander, he may not swim as fast or win as many medals as Michael Phelps, but when it comes to courage, he's in a class all of his own.
Because government one day is a kutsi, wasa zoita, zima, desperate. Cedric was one of only two athletes at London representing the country of Liberia. The other, Pablo the Pigeon, appeared as one of the targets in the men's double trap. But it was Cedric who made international headlines with his heroic feats in the pool. In many ways, Cedric represents what the Olympic Games are all about. Rich Western countries being condescending towards much poorer developing nations. And yet London wasn't Cedric's first Olympic Games. He previously represented his country in the diving, the Roman rings, and the men's vault. But it was his bravery in the London 1500 metres that most of us will never forget. I mean, how could you not be inspired by that? Sure, he ended up drowning, which was obviously disappointing. Watching him get scooped out of the pool and then dumped in the bin at the Athletes Village, to me, that embodied the true spirit of the Olympic Games. Yeah, I get sick and tired of these blokes. They're a bunch of morons. The less we talk about them, the better. Now we've, uh, we've actually just got... A tweet has just gone out while we're on air saying that Gina Reinhart has died. And it's from Richard Wilkins, so it's probably true. Yeah, look, we, uh, we, we've got a standby obituary on, on the shelf, don't we? Yeah, we, we do have it prepared. Everyone in the media prepares standby yeah. obituaries. Obviously, we recorded it earlier, so there are a few options we've had to cover. But I think, just in case, we, should, we better roll it. We should roll it. Gina Hope Reinhart, the world's richest woman, has died at the age of 59. Has died at the age of 60 at the age of 176, after 90 years on life support to stop her children inheriting anything. Gina Reinhart wanted to be remembered as a mining magnate who made her own fortune, just like the father she inherited her fortune from. Reinhart idolised Lang Hancock. I think my father's nearly perfect. I think he's quite handsome. Her father's sentiments were equally effusive. A slothful, vindictive and devious baby elephant. From an early age, Hancock insisted his daughter be treated just like any normal super-rich princess. <laughs> no, no. I gave her exactly the marks that she deserved. And how did she take it? Uh, well, she bought the school and she had me sacked. <laughs> Reinhardt went briefly to Sydney University, trying to buy the student newspaper and install a young Andrew Bolt as editor. She returned to WA, however, winning a job as her father's only child. And Gina always promoted the use of foreign labour, even though her first attempt turned out to be very expensive. Later in life, Reinhardt tried to push her political views to the wider community. Extra tax! She invested 87 million in Fairfax, an odd business decision given that the Murdoch papers were already pushing her agenda for free. Her quest for media domination also saw Reinhardt take over the big issue, where she made all the vendors wear new uniforms. She even turned poet, but her strategy of writing the universe's worst poem and mounting it on a rock got a limited audience. Similarly at Fairfax, her idea of mounting the age on massive rocks failed to boost circulation. And at Channel 10, she repeated the mistake by only hiring people who were as thick as rocks. Gina Reinhardt passed away yesterday after a long battle with cancer. After a long battle with the directors of Fairfax. After a long battle with anorexia. After a long battle with Matthew Newton. Despite her wealth, she insisted the Australian people pay for a state funeral. The memorial was attended by those who loved her. She was a really good boss. And she paid too much tax as well. And those who knew her best, her children, who for legal reasons were not allowed to say anything about their mother. There's no doubt Australia has today lost a titanic figure. I didn't welcome Gina Reinhardt taking over Fairfax, but she was an important Australian and deserved a commemorative addition. And if we'd had any staff left, that's exactly what we would have done. Gina Reinhardt will be laid to rest in an open-cut grave and then dug up and sold to China. The Senator Corey Bernardi uh, made some ill-disciplined comments. They're offensive, they're hysterical. Lack of judgment. It's alarmist. He's a decent bloke. Bizarre statements. A talented politician. I totally dissociate myself from those remarks. I wasn't born to be a footballer. I wasn't born to win a major. In fact, I have no idea why I was born at all. 
other than to make these fucking annoying ads and to screen them over and over every single ad break. Join me online, tomwaterhouse.com. Or just wait until the next ad break and you can join me again there. Youth! Do we even need them? Probably not. Throughout history, young people have been wholesome and groovy. Jam a party tonight. But not anymore. Today's youth are known as Generation Spend, Generation Google, Generation Wasted, Generation Useless. We are not Generation Useless. Yes, you are. How many of them know how to get a bit of a saw and cut a bit of timber and, and drive a nail into it? So they didn't go outdoors, they didn't learn how to play with ropes and sticks. In the good old days, kids were content with ropes and sticks. But today's youth are... Spoiled brats, <laughs> sponging off mum and dad, spending it all like there's no tomorrow. In fact, today's youth are barely even human. Couple of quick questions then for Gen Y. Right. Do you still use knives and forks? I see them sitting down grazing like apes. Not only do these animals not use cutlery, but they see they found they don't even use clothes. Would you let your daughter go out looking like this? Do you want to look like a hooker? The shocking trend that parents can't control. The outraged viewers of Australia tuned in by the millions. The latest fashion trend is to hit the town, basically leaving your clothes at home. A fashion trend so insidious that it started in 1967. Luckily, the solution is elementary. There are plenty of local girls to provide some fashion inspiration. Jacinta Campbell, she dresses in a very classy way and, and behaves in a very classy way. You know, I think Kate Waterhouse is quite a good role model. She looks a very pretty feminine girl and she, she doesn't let it all hang out. To write, Kate Waterhouse and Jacinta Campbell are the definite definition of demure. And the reporter who brought us that story, Alison Petrowski, would never be seen in public wearing hot pants. Even when they're not new, young people are undergoing a strange transformation. Unruly children are mutating into criminals. And we've obtained exclusive footage of this process. People love violence so much that they even film it on their YouTubes. The teenagers were filmed attacking each other. The videos have since been removed from YouTube. Damn YouTube. If only there was a more irresponsible broadcaster, we'd show us these videos. The pictures are confronting. Teenage girls and boys cheered on as they viciously attack each other. Thanks, Channel 7. To be fair, they did issue this warning. And a warning some viewers may find these pictures disturbing. Before they immediately proceeded to show the pictures to a bunch of kids and old ladies. I don't know what's wrong with the young ones today. Look at that, it's disgusting. Channel 7 had so many disgusting videos, they were forced to run nine screens at once. Kempsey residents are horrified. I'm horrified! They should have been in at least 16 screens! The kids have never had playground fights before. There can only be one explanation. Video games are corrupting children. Stealing money, selling drugs, driving cars and running over people, shooting police officers. Now those things can't be good for your mind. That's right. Just look what playing Angry Birds did to this kid's mind. <laughs> Although harebrained academics disagree. Not me. Oh. A very useful comparison is with Japan, which has one of the highest saturations of gamers in the world. It's one of the least violent societies. Sure, Prof, but Japan has harmless, colourful games, like Battle Raper 2. To get to the bottom of the issue, Seven's Robert Avadia went undercover inside a video game. What are you doing, Robert? Oh, my God, don't be a hero. Just get out of there, quickly. And he uncovered a very telling fact. What, the teenage crime dropped 5% in the last 12 months. No, not that fact, this fact. That must affect their minds. Hang on, stealing, shooting, what does that remind me of? Stealing money. The masked man jumped the counter, ripping cash out of the till. Selling drugs. Police allege the woman was selling drugs from this house. Driving cars and running over people. He tried to run police over. Shooting police officers. Two men charged over the shooting death of a Gold Coast policeman last year. What it really reminds me of is those two guys who copied a robbery they saw on a current affair. That's it! We should keep kids away from the news! Because they didn't learn how to play with ropes and sticks. Oh yeah, and from that guy. <laughs> What? <laughs>
Now, one of the big issues in the media since we were last on air has been the rise of the internet troll. Yes, Twitter trolls in particular. It's been a boom year for those guys, and to make trolling that little bit easier for them, we've created a troll feedback form on our website. <laughs> Simply select a cast member and tick the term of abuse which you think best describes that person. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. And that's not all on our website. If you want to catch up on any episodes or leave us a media tip-off, then please check out abc.net.au slash hamsterwheel. Where you can also purchase our new book, Where's Muhammad? But uh, <laughs> no, no, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we're, we're big cowards and we've made sure that he's nowhere to be found in the entire volume. Yeah. <laughs> so until next week, good, good night. night. <laughs>